In this example, I'd like to consider a round torsion bar of length L that's subjected to an end torque TL. And I'd like to find the rotation on the end of the bar. So I'd like to determine what uh, phi of L is, which we'll just simply call theta. Okay, and the length of the bar is going to be one meter. Uh, and the radius of the bar will be 25 millimeters, and the end torque will be uh, 100,000 newton millimeters. And to make this problem just a little bit different uh, from the ones before and help elucidate the, the different pieces of the theory, I'm going to assume that the material law is no longer linear elastic. It's going to be a nonlinear elastic material law. So tau is going to be equal to g times gamma plus g hat times gamma cubed. So g hat is a second material constant, and g is, will take to be 10 gigapascals, and g hat will take to be 20 times 10 to the 7 gigapascals. So this is going to be my setup here. And so now it's going to be really important to sort of keep the different pieces of the theory separate. So we have the kinematic relationship, which is always true. We have our equilibrium relations, which are always true. Uh, and we have a relationship between the torque and the shear stresses, which is always true. And what we're changing now is the stress-strain relationship in the system. So, so we'll start with equilibrium. And if I make a section cut at any value of z, I find out that the internal torque is always going to be equal to TL. So the internal torque in the system is a constant. Uh, and I'm also going to have that gamma is equal to R phi prime always. So that's not going to change. That's, that's a function of the geometry, namely that we have a circular bar that we have that relationship always. And we have that the torque is equal to the integral of the shear stress times the radial position over the cross section. And now, this is where things are going to be a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and plug in for my shear stress. I'll plug in my new material law, my nonlinear elastic law. And so for tau, I'll have g gamma plus g hat gamma cubed. I'm going to go ahead and substitute in for gamma the relationship that always holds for round torsion bars, which is r phi prime, so r times the twist rate. And now things get a little bit trickier because I end up with this twist rate cube term here. So the problem is going to be nonlinear due to that cube. But I can still expand things out like I did before. I find out that the torque is gj phi prime plus g hat phi prime cubed. And then let me go ahead and call this integral of r to the 4 dA. I'll just go ahead and call that g hat or j hat just for convenience. So it's similar to the polar moment of inertia, but it's, it's the fourth moment. So if I plug in for the torque at any cross section, I find out that TL is equal to GJ phi prime plus G hat J hat phi prime cubed. And I know what TL is, that's a given. I know what G, J, G hat, and J hat are just from the given information. So here I have a cubic polynomial that I can solve for phi prime. So I went ahead and did that with MATLAB, and I found out that phi prime is equal to 9.39 times 10 to the minus 6 radians per millimeter. So that gives me the twist rate in the system. And knowing the twist rate, I can integrate from one end of the bar to the other. So I can integrate phi prime from 0 to L. I know that phi of 0 is equal to 0 because it's built in. So that leaves me with an expression for phi of L. And in this case, phi prime is a constant as a function of z. So this integral is just phi, tri phi prime times L. And I can plug in the values up there that I have. Uh, namely that L is equal to 1,000 millimeters, and I find out I get an end rotation of 9.39 times 10 to the minus 3 radians. So sometimes people call that a milliradian. If you convert that to degrees, you get uh, roughly half a degree.